Don't worry, he's coming back. Okay, my bad, guys. <laughs> my bad. I just saw chat wigging the fuck out. Okay, that's fixed. Okay, so luckily, luckily we uh, we didn't talk about too much. Let's, okay. All right. So, are you in the room? Yes, I'm in the room. Okay, cool. So let's see. Where should where should we start? Okay, so first off, you say you're struggling with disadvantage and things, stuff like that. So what I think is going to be the best course is if we play for a bit, and I see how you deal with me putting you in disadvantage, and go from mm -hmm. there. That's awesome, because I know, you know, your characters like to put me in strings, and I know that's exactly what I want to go through. Okay, alright, then we can definitely work this out. Right now, I'm going to start opening things up with Ryu, then I'll probably break out Ken and Terry, and kind of see, like, how you deal with being a disadvantage from them, especially with Ken. Ken will definitely show me a lot. Thank you, Ronan. Sorry, guys. I did not mean to be muted there. <laughs> oh, man. I like like half my views just died because of that. That sucks. Oh, well. That, it happens. All right. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay. I saw that hitbox on uh, earlier, and I it's, I'm still have PTSD from it. Luckily, it wasn't a, a sh uh, Sharpie Zard told me that it's actually not accurate on uh, on uh, ultimate frame data, which is kind of surprising. Oh, you, uh, down tilt. Yeah. Mhm. Mm there it is. Nice. So your nair is frame is like negative five on block, if I remember correctly. What's how fast is your jab? I thought I couldn't tell you. I think it's frame five. I think it is. I'll in a situation like that, if I was to like mash like grab or if I was to mash sure you can even because my sure you can frame six, you should be able to just jab like after an air on block and like just kind of put me in a tech chase. Because I think that's what you're. I think that's what it does. That was good. That was good. Seems like you really like Nair to get out of disadvantage right now. Okay. I don't blame you because the priority on that move is really good. If I ever approach, you're definitely ready. That's good. I don't really know what Incineroar does about zoning, though. Um, one thing you probably could do is definitely revenge it more. Just though, like, whenever you do get a counter hit, it'll, you know... Especially if I do it approaching, like, Shaku Hover or something like that, that'd be a really good counter to that situation. Oh my god, I tried to mix your shield. That was good. Okay. Did they make the hitbox and downer bigger? Ah, good one. Um, I believe they did. Okay. Or at least fixed up the sour spots. In a situation like that, it might be more consistent to try to go for Lariat because of how active the hitbox is. Plus, I think you can still recover from it. I see a lot of Incineroars go like for like if they know they're snapping, trying to snap ledge, they'll just go like right to the ledge and immediately just just Lariat and just slap you away. Shit. Wow, I lived that. Whoever told me that was the strongest back throw in the game was a liar. Oh no, it has really good base, but uh, Ness still has the strongest uh, back air. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, back throw. Oh, okay. Up throw. Yeah, you got a kill throw from up throw and back throw. Okay, that's good. Yep, caught the jump. So in a situation like that, um, going to talk about disadvantage, I noticed that normally it's like Nair or jump out of hit stun. In a situation where you're up there, remember that now that I know you have a frame four armor move to up B with, you can kind of use it the way Terry come down a lot, especially if you know if they're just gonna raw challenge you in a situation like that. I don't, I, I wasn't always to be fair, 
but in a situation where you see your opponent is always going up there after you, now you know you have an option that'll pretty much, you know, slap them from trying. And it probably does a lot of beefy damage too, because doesn't, like, the first, like, the startup of the move actually drag you into the last? Startup of like, um, like, if you up B and someone jumps into it, it'll drag them into it, right? They don't really have fallout yeah. issues, right? Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Yeah, I'm mad, because Terry's does. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, yeah, in a situation like that, that'd be a good time to throw that out. Or just revenge. Revenge is also another one that would be less committal, and you get, like, a lot of uh, revenge, which is another thing I'm noticing. Revenge out of hit stun, you have a... Th it's frame three. You have a frame three mm -hmm. counter out of hit stun, and, like, if I'm comboing you and my shit's not true, you can immediately, like, put me in a tech chase with that, because I know that it sends at a really awkward angle whenever you revenge counter me. Mm. So I feel like that's a good start right there. Is like, start mixing up, like, whenever you think I'm going to challenge you with, like, revenge more. Nair's fine. Jumping's fine. And maybe... Maybe when you jump on stage, you can jump neutral air dodge and kind of drift in. That's a really good mix. So that's just a general mix that everyone can do, instead of just immediately thinking that your opponent, like your opponent, thinks you're going to challenge them. Because like, if you air dodge through them and they up air you, now you got stage control. And if they challenge you, you have an invincible up smash and a whole bunch of other shenanigans. So, I'm going to go Ken. I want to kind of see. Like, I kind of want to see how you dealt with zoning. I think that's just an incineroar issue. Let's see how you deal with a combo character. I can't decide on a wireless or a uh, wired GameCube controller. GameCube controller is normally the way to go, in my opinion. That was good. That as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that one... I forget the startup on Larry. I'll have to look it up. That's the one thing that Incineroar really has, and that's really good combo breakers with Lariat and his down B. And his up B in some situations, too. I, I don't know what percent it kills at. I have to look that up. Do you happen to know what percent uh, his up B kills at? Okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's just kind of a rough, like, idea of when. Okay. And it's like motor memory. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's one thing I definitely would suggest is, like, just knowing things like that is really important, especially if you can, like, scale it to, like, you know, if you have the percents for everybody. Yo, Trails of Death, thank you so much for the follow, man. Welcome to the dojo. See, that's good. See, in that situation, that's a shield mix that only Incinera can get out of in a lot of cases because, like, if I go to Crescent into Jab... Like, a lot of times if you grab it a shield, it'll, you'll just lose. It's actually kind of crazy. That worked. By the way, um, just to kind of give me an idea, like, do you compete at all? Ah, I'm asking a lot of questions while we're playing. I apologize. I'll wait. <laughs> it's okay. That was good. That was good. See, in situations like that, it's super solid. Jesus Christ, they did so much damage. One thing I'll definitely say when I'm playing footsies with you, you definitely want to throw out way more down tilt because your down tilt will beat most of mine. Like if I short hop in and there, I, you, I, I'll, you know, I'll hit you. But the mini game would be if I'm gonna go high, you can larry it or you can down tilt or you can short hop in there to kind of catch me because your nair will beat my nair and, and like if I go to head to head with it.
There we go. Nice. That was good. So, in a, when a ledge trap situation, I, another thing I'm noticing when it comes to your disadvantage is the timing of how when you pick your options has like a set. It's like it's pretty. I kind of know when you want to do it. Yeah, you normally like grab a ledge and you immediately buffer your options. That's why I got the back here. There, I just kind of was confident at that point. So. Incineroar's mix-ups off the ledge, like the up B, like what you did there, which is very committal, unless you know that I'm going to come like, running at you, like that's not really something I would really want to go for much. Um, what I, you could do is like you always have like leg going the ledge and like side being if I'm at a certain distance, or just, you know, sometimes like not going for the mix-up and just simply picking a base option, just like neutral get up, jump, and if they like come up in the air after you, you can buffer like something like counter, like what I did there, a lot of Incineroar's catch me for that. So you can just kind of bounce me away if you see me coming after you like that. So you got to think, whenever you're at, in this position, what options are, what options am I covering? And how am I ledge trapping? There's normally two ways people do this. They're normally like buffering options a lot. Like you see wolves do it. Like they'll short hop and air at the ledge or like a, a link player. They'll drop a bomb there and they'll short, start short hop and airing. The thing is, the counter to that is to simply take your time and mix up when you're going to do something. Like in that case, like mix up when you're going to do neutral get up attack or something like that. Or when you're gonna roll, because a lot of times, like whenever they're they're covering all those options, there's one option they're not covering. Like if uh, Ryu's like sitting there down tilting, you can roll past them. But you also have to be aware why you need to mix up your timing is if you just immediately see that he's down tilting ledge and you pick your option instantly, it could be a bait. But when you mix up with the timing, it makes it harder to react to it, even if it is a bait. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. okay I see what you're saying. You know, down tilt. He's probably looking for you know you to roll back so that he can you know get you or something. Exactly. So you could simply wait for him to wait wait to see if he's gonna roll back and then just neutral get up. And then if he like tries to challenge you or something like that afterwards you have counter, you have Lariat for you know the reversal if they hit you. Plus you have like you know a frame five like Nair out of shield that you could abuse as well. Down tilt Lariat, sick, yeah. See? Oh my god, see like if I'm trying to play footsies, like getting close, like your down tilt's gonna win. Oh, just out of curiosity, uh, do you know how to dash walk? No, 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 like it's a tech. So this is a normal dash for Ken. Now this is a dash walk. You see how far I went? Yeah. Okay, so do you have C your C6 set to attack? So, yep. Okay, so all you gotta do is when you dash towards me, hold the direction that you're dashing, and then tap up on the C stick at the same time. It's like it's a rhythm thing. As soon as you tap and dash, just flick up on the C stick, and you'll and you'll end up sliding. Just remember, yeah, just, yeah, you're doing it. Just remember to hold forward when you do it, and you flick up. You see, if you're getting up tilt, you're doing it to you're holding C stick up for too long. So you just gotta hold forward on dash and then flick up. As soon as you input it. As soon as you input it. Okay. So the reason is, is like, oh, you just did it. Okay, that is go. That literally goes nowhere for Incineroar. I'm sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so <laughs> trash. I was hoping maybe dash walking will help him. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, it kind of does. Yeah, you kind of just did it. That's, you kind of does. So what you can do is, like, if you get used to dash walking, you can do dash walk down tilt and stuff like that. And it gives you a little more of, a, of an option whenever it comes to sp um, spacing and getting up on top of your opponent because of how big your down tilt is. Um, all right. All right, let's try. Let's go. See, like, the down tilt right there almost hit me. You know what? It might have some applications. It's not great, but it's something. Oh, shit. You, you definitely caught me from mashing there. Down tilt whenever you set me up like that, like, um, so let me, let me do a comparison with what I do with Ken. So, there's a thing whenever it comes to, like, how you could option select your opponent's, um, advantage date. Just with this key rule, normally your opponent is always matching something out of hit stuff. So the question is, how many options can you cover by simply waiting, and you'd be surprised. So if I landed a simple bread and butter, like, let's say, like this, you see how far I popped you away? From this distance, if I have, if I'm not trying to like follow up, I can simply wait. If you neutral air dodge, air dodge in, air dodge away, or attack, I, if I'm waiting, I can simply dash walk and cover the majority of those and immediately punish you for it, right? Okay. So that's four options I'm naturally covering alone. And if you jump away, 
I, ha I know that if I can't raw punish it, I can dash walk and I can get under you. So on the flip side for Incineroar, how this can work for you is you have moves that do that as well. Like your down tilt. Like down tilt me. If I pop, like if you pop me up right there and I'm in the inner hitbox, you can just combo me, right? Now what about if I'm out here when you're spacing in neutral? See, if I'm in a situation like this, you have like a couple fall ups you can go for. Or you can simply wait to see what I'm going to mash out of hits them like you did when I mashed Nair and you immediately side bead and you grab me. Now, the thing is about when you do that, if I was the neutral air dodge, if I was the air dodge in, or if I was the air dodge, uh, if I was the neutral air dodge, air dodge in, or like tech in place or something like that, you cover all options with that except like air dodge away. So yeah. if your opponent knows that, you have to be thinking, how can I scare him into going off for that op like going like air dodge away so that I can punish that as well. You know what I mean? Like, that's how you want to think. And it's all done by just simply waiting to see what I mash out of hits done. Alright, let's go. Cool, cool. At any point, you need me to slow down and, like, if I'm, if uh, there's something I need to expand on, feel free to ask. Good shit. See, like, right there, when you jumped up there with an air. I immediately mash Nair. I've been like, like if I mash Nair or neutral, uh, neutral, or like, sorry, air dodge. Excuse me. Just be ready for it. Okay. Yeah. Remember, mix up that timing at that ledge. Yeah. Don't buff. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I'm standing at roll distance, waiting for you to do it. I'm not even like, re I'm not even reading it. I'm just sitting there waiting for you to do it. Oh wow, I can't hit you from hanging from the ledge. It's good to know. That was good. That was really good. Whenever I throw Hadoken off at you off stage, take that that take that moment to try to revenge it. By the way, in the corner, you only have one opportunity to react to that, and that's whenever the first light tilt hits you. After, like, hard up tilt connects, that's all true. Shit. That's actually really good to know, too. Like, abusing the armor for whenever you see me in neutral, like, mashing tilts and playing footsies and shit. Like, whenever you know that I'm buffering my options, I just abuse that command grab a lot, considering the priority on it. Especially when I'm just mashing tilts and stuff. It seems best, like, the safest to do it whenever you're in advantage, though. So, I wouldn't just throw it out in neutral. Unless, like, you're just very confident and, like, you know it, you see a habit. Ah, okay. oh, shit. Okay. 82? Oh, my God. <laughs> Help me! Why? Oh, my God. Okay, when it comes to Shodos, I think your best punish in that case would be to like Lariat, or if you're really ballsy and you don't understand, you know the timing I'm gonna go for, you can always like try to counter it. I wouldn't do that. You either grab or Lariat, probably be optimal there. Wait, sliding forward smash is good with um, with Sonora too. Dash dash. Oh wait. Oh wait, that's the input for it. Uh, okay, it's on. Actually, um, type something in the chat. That might be helpful. Um, do you have any, uh, okay, let's pause for a second. So, is there any matchups or anything specifically you want to focus on? That's a good question. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna, we're gonna do a little exercise here. I'm legit going to just pop you in the air, and I'm gonna try to catch your, catch you in disadvantage, and I want you to try to mix it up as much as possible. See, I just simply stood there and waited. I was able to react to all three of those options. Air dodge. All the air dodge options. But I sit there and wait. So you have to think, if I'm sitting down here and I'm waiting for you to land, what's the fastest way I can, like, hit, hit you before I'm able to do something? Because I can buffer parry and just, like, like I said, wait for you to air dodge, cover all those options. So you have to think, if I'm not going to challenge him, then I need to just get away from him. So how? what's the fastest way I can get away from him? So in that case, it would be something as simple as jump away 
and then like just taking stage control and going to the corner that's the safest option or if you want to go the raw like challenge route because you don't you want to challenge to see if my advantage state's good like if i'm even going to be able mm -hmm. to catch you you can come down but that's a risk that's a chance thing for you to get reversal by a character like ken that you don't want to do that so you just really have yeah, to like yeah. you have to weigh out the risk reward you know what i mean and just be vigilant of what you see your opponent doing in that case all right i'm gonna keep yeah, throwing you in the air One of the bad habits that I've had is that I always land with an option, like a, like an attack. You know? Okay. I never really just land and wait to see. I always just land with an attack. Well, because that... I like I like narrow line. I get that, and that's that's it's a good tool. But in the grand scheme of things, the number one thing that top players exploit and any good player exploits is the fact that how bad disadvantages in this game in this game really is, especially when you're popped up in the air. And a lot mm -hmm. of times, if you're just positioned well to not get hit by Unga Bunga reversals, you can just simply wait to see what they're going to throw out as long as you're, con like, you're holding stage control. Like, for example, like, if you pop me up in the air, and I'm up here and I'm trying to, like, land and stuff like that, if I burn my double jump and I land here, you can command grab me. Or you can down tilt me. Or you can do whatever the hell you want. Or if I Unga Bunga down and, like, land with an aerial here, and you know I'm going to do that, you can just catch it with with like your your counter if you're confident you have way more options in that scenario and the thing is a lot of people don't realize the options they really have to catch like a lot of these like these dumb options people just throw out when they're trying to force their way out of disadvantage so mm -hmm. whenever you start getting good at ca catching people for doing this that's whenever you get them to start playing your game you start catching them at the corner more because we all know incendiary's clutch trapping is really good and you just start getting them to play your game because they now know i can't just force my sweat self down on top of you same goes for you. You have to understand, okay, my opponent, how good is his, advan his advantage state? Is he actually going to catch me for landing with there and stuff like this? Or is he throwing me up in the air and is he immediately chasing after me? You know, like, mm -hmm. is he, like, Mario's. Are they instantly going up after me with up airs? And is it true? If it's not, I can buffer counter. You know, that's how you need to be thinking when you're in disadvantage. Instead of, oh shit, I hit the A button. You know what I mean? We all have been through that stage. We all have been through that stage. But once you start expanding with more of your mix-ups, it helps. So I'm going to keep throwing you in the air, and I want you to keep on trying to mix up how you're going to land, all right? That was good, because I, did, I didn't mean to dash tag. I meant the down tilt. I would have, that would have connected. That was good. See, as soon as I said you saw me inter um, go into a dash, there's like 13 frames you can hit me when I dash. So interrupting dashes is super important. So if you see me doing this shit... Just know that if you have a first bur fast burst option, like a dash grab or a dash attack, because your dash attack's good, that's a good time to throw it out, because your dash attack will beat a lot of my normals and stuff like that, considering how big the hitbox is. Same thing with your side B as well. Also really good for catching me for just dashing. And if I'm dashing and hitting buttons and stuff like that, you can interrupt it as well with like counter if you see me doing that pattern. All right, you ready? See, I just said I st I waited for the air dodge. That's why air dodging is so dangerous. Because as long as I like pop you up like right here, and then you you can like land around here. As long as I'm positioning myself, like let's say you're in the air and you're right about there, I'm right here. I can just simply react to all air dodge options. I can. And if you jump away, I can dash walk and get under you. Or if you jump jump over me, I can just cover you that way. You can do the same thing. So as long as like you pop me in the air, let's say like with up throw or something like that or up tilt like do a bread and butter on me like i have to be so in a landing situation i burn my jump okay now you have to think if they ever burn their jump i'm just gonna place myself exactly where you're at and i can catch them with side b every single time if they buffer shield i got them if they buffer attack i armor through it you know and then you'll just be able to get damage that way or you can dash attack it if they're dash attack kill percent you see you kind of see how the option like how you can start option selecting people's disadvantage mm -hmm. okay so that's that's kind of how you want to be thinking whenever you're in disadvantage and how you're out of disadvantage. Does it make sense? Yeah, just see what their disadvantage is and then wait it out and then kind of position yourself in a way that kind of goes off of their mindset. If they're going to go and do something, you wait it out and then you attack them. Yes, exactly. Just the number one key rule with doing this, make sure you're holding center stage at all times. As long as you're like not giving up stage control, you're playing, you're doing everything right. That's the number one thing, okay? All right, let's go ahead and play this one out. That was good. That was actually a really good reversal. That's the first time I've seen you do that too.
See, like, now you're mixing up the timing. I'm actually getting reversed more at the ledge. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Oh my god. Yeah, these uh, full hop back airs are actually working out right now. That was good. Yeah, you're already playing at the ledge way better. Oh, nice, 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 nice. <laughs> Good stuff, man. So, yeah, right now you're definitely mixing up the corner more. But let's play another game. I want to see how you deal with, like, being juggled in the air. I'm going to switch over to Terry. Also, one thing I would like to see you do more with uh, Incineroar, you're up air is easily one of your safest aerials. So like one thing I see a lot of Incineroar players do is they'll do cross up up air and then they'll like go into like something like Lariat because like Lariat can like chill break or chill poke or do some kind of wild stuff if they like drop shield. I feel you need to implement some of the cheesy stuff. The cheesy stuff is good. Yeah, I only know the basic cheese right now. I don't know none of that French stuff right now. Oh, do you, uh, do you, do you actually know Incineroar's frame data? If you don't, I have it pulled up right here so I can like I can kind of tell you like things you can do with the character that you might not know about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like if you like I said with the cross up upright thing, that's actually a really good mix to where if they try to do any kind of out of shield option that's not at least frame three, it's you're gonna win. And that's really good. Negative four is really good on block. Like so let's say Mario tries to up be out of shield after you cross up up air into Lariat, he's gonna lose. Like that's how good that move is. And if, uh, like, you can cross up up air and then go into a crab instead, and then, like, get a kill throw that way. You know, just a really good safe way. Think of, like, how Ike players and Wario players, like, cross up, like, up air and, like, nair a lot. You know what I mean? Kind of think, think yeah. of it that way. And considering how good your full hop is, you know how you've been doing the full hop back air stuff? Try throwing an up yeah. air a bit more with that. Let's see, how, let's see what happens. Okay. All right, let's continue. Yeah, and Sinor's up air is easily his best aerial in my opinion it is so good just frame data wise hitbox wise juggle wise combo wise it just does everything for you and if you manage to hit the up air you can juggle me into like a strings of up airs exactly that's what i usually don't do which is my problem what stringing up airs yeah okay nice Good fair. That down tilt to interrupt my dash, that was smart. Nice. That was really good. You knew I was going to go high. They buffed the sour spot or something. I don't think that hitbox was ever that big. I could be wrong. I don't get to fight many good incinerators. So. Let's see. That was good. See, like in a situation where you knew I was committing to the power wave, that's when you'd want to throw something like that out. God, the F tilts. I'm trying to catch my landings more when I try to jump on top of you with it. Jesus! Alright. You're also starting to edge guard more now, too. 
It looks like you're more uh, more confident in edge guarding uh, Terry than than Joe does right now. Ah, didn't they buff the, didn't they buff the range on that? Uh, in the first patch, yeah. They put it up 25%. Okay. I'm so scared if they keep buffing you guys, I'm not gonna lie. Like how you stalled on the platform there, that was good. Okay. Nice. Thank you. So right off the bat, you're already mixing up, like throwing out more feints whenever it comes to like how you're coming off the, off, off the platform before. I was getting a lot of anti-air sure you can's on you with Ken because you're like instantly running off the platform and stuff. Now that you're kind of like, you know, short hopping and fainting like you're going to go off stage and like you're going to come off of it and stuff like that. It caught me off guard a lot of times. You got a lot of reversals that way, which is good. Um, the one thing I'd still say is just, I'm telling you, just experiment. Do not try to, don't focus on winning. Just try landing cross up up air when you go for the back air situations, especially when it comes to like full hopping over me. Because whenever you're above me, like, you can kind of, this is the mini game. whenever it comes to someone challenging you in the air. You have a counter that gives you an insane amount of, of damage if I, if, if I be into it. And that's a fear factor that you can use if you show, hey, I'm not afraid to throw this out. If you come up here and start pushing buttons, I'm going to hit down B and you're really going to be in pain. You know, that's kind of like, you know, like how people are scared of like Ryu Shoryuken or stuff like that. You can do the same thing. And then whenever you get them scared, where they're like, oh god, he's like, he's gonna land on top of me, they'll start shielding more, and things like that, and that's when you can start setting up that pressure. Alright, let's go. Wait, that did not connect. What?! Hold up! Do it again. Just keep doing it. Oh my god, you literally have to be right on top of me. Yep. Okay, it's still it's still good though. It's still good on shield. You just have to make sure you're up really close. Alright. Yeah, that's, that's Okay, I learned something new today. Good. See now whenever it comes to me just kind of throwing out these like these weird strings on block and stuff like that. I'm actually kind of worried because now you're throwing out rage. Um, you're throwing out down B more. Can't you get like counter like down B in the dash attack? Isn't that a confirm? Uh, not anymore. It's not. Wait, not anymore. They took it away. Yeah. Ever since they buffed uh, revenge, you can't really. That's so trash. Yeah. That's one thing that I uh, read up Mewtwo King crying about when they uh, released the newest patch. Oh, okay. Yeah, buff Incineroar. Buff this character some more. Give him some more love. He's still got some good stuff going for him, though. I, I think he's still a strong character. He's some I don't know. What are the What's the basic thoughts of like Incineroar players? Do they think like he's mid? I think he's mid. Some people just like to say he's the uh, bottom. I don't think he's bottom. Hell no. He's got too much good stuff to be bottom. Somewhere in mid, though. I can definitely see it. That was good. Ow. God. Sir, please. I would like... I would like to... Okay. Okay. Let me, let me actually try to pick an option. God, that was insane. How much damage did that do? Can up air combo into up B? Let's try it out. Okay. Oh my god, dude. I. Okay, the the hitbox on Ultimate Frame Data must be lying to me. Okay, we'll finish this one out and we'll go ahead and start working on some matchups if you would like. Jesus! See, like, like in that situation now, like. Oh, I'm dead. 
Like, yeah, do that more. Do that way more. Also, isn't Lariat on shield? Like, how much how much damage does Lariat on shield do? I want you to Lariat on my shield. Oh my god. Do it again. Okay, let me see, let me let me try to break my shield real quick. Yeah. Okay, I want to see what Lariat does on a full shield. Yeah, if I get you on ledge right over here, I can actually pressure you and almost get you a broken shield. If I pressure you a little bit more, then yeah, I can get you. All right. Do, 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 do. Try doing Nair into it. Okay, yeah. Like, if I didn't live to least parry that, that's really good pressure. You definitely should land that more on block and just go for it. That's I now think about it, I remember seeing the Cinema players do that more. Here, let me uh let me hold shield again. I'll even try to I'll even try to up you out of shield on this. Oh, I mean that works too. If I jump out of shield, you would be able to do that and catch me off guard. And I think it actually shield poked me. Wow, that's actually dumb. Yeah, I definitely use that for shield pressure. Jesus Christ. Gee, okay. I just... Oh, what? What? I'm a god. Woo! <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> that was actually wild. Fuck. See, like, yeah. That's actually really good whenever I, like, pick my options, like, right up the ledge, like, down tilt stuff. You're already playing better, by the way. Like, way better. So, yeah, now we discover some shield pressure stuff. You're mixing up your disadvantage with your timing a lot more. Um, you're starting to get better at interrupting me in neutral with, like, things like counter and stuff like that whenever I try to, like, go for fake strings, which is good. Okay, I feel like I feel like we got a good start here. Got a good start here. Okay, so is there any specific matchups that you, like, really struggle with or, like, ones that you just, you know, you want to work through? So I really struggle with um, one of my friends, he likes to play Dark Pit. He likes to mix up his um, options a lot and he gets me for a lot of breath. Another matchup that I really don't like is Snake. Snake. Obviously because it's his owner, yeah. Yeah, Snake and, is definitely would be a pain. And Pelotena is another matchup that I really don't like all too much. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely see how all those are a pain. So if you had to pick one to work on right now, which one would you like to work on? I'd say Snake. All right, let me pull up Snake's frame data. So I honestly don't really know what the strategy is outside of just being really good at ledge trapping Snake. Because as good as Snake is, like he's one of the easier characters to ledge trap, but he's also a character that has godlike ledge trapping of his own. So it's a very, you know, double-edged sword in that regard. So let's go ahead and, okay, I've got that pulled up. Let's actually talk a little bit about like what options you have to ledge trap because that's one thing I'm noticing is like like a lot of Incineroar's ledge traps like a lot of Incineroar players like their ledge traps are insane and a lot of times like I feel like because they opt just like kind of like how I do with Shoto's. So I'm going to go ahead and go snake and we're going to go over ledge trapping because I feel like that's going to be a big part of the matchup. Mm -hmm. Okay let's go ahead and get into this. So when just I for a little more, uh, I guess, context, um, I guess the way Snake is able to, you know, um, put up his wall and then if you try to go near him, he he can grab you and just immediately, you know, push you out and then, you know, get his stuff going on again. That's something yeah. I really struggle with a lot, too. If you if you notice, there's like a little trend with me and grabs. Yeah, yeah. The thing is about grabbing, like, you know, you're a grappler, that's not a bad thing. The big thing that I see in this matchup is going to be important is revenging grenade and stacking that. And just knowing how to simply, like, walk, uh, kind of like how I do with the Shotos. You know, walking to the corner and then just having good option coverage to where it comes to him getting past it, past you. I'll, kind of, I'll, I'll talk about it as we go in. So, first off, um, you can just run through Snake. That is one thing you can do because the hitbox that like you know doesn't actually flinch you so that's one thing that Incineroar can take advantage of and whenever snake is like up in the air mashing the b button and stuff like that one thing you can do is like you have a command grab sometimes that you can use to kind of catch them in the air but whenever i'm in this position right here this is what's really gonna like matter so if i'm over here like let's say he's immediately setting up like setting up this pulling grenade grabbing it throwing it and stuff like that I want to see what options you have to catch grenade. Like, you can always do that. Um, so I'm going to lob it to you, and I want you to hit jab or down tilt or something. Yeah, okay. Let's see. I got some jabs actually grab snake grenade easier than others, so let's see how easy it is for you. I'm, that's a slow lob. 
Okay, now I'm gonna do a fast lob. Okay, fast lob can be a little bit tricky. Okay. Yep. So, you can, like, let me see Incineroar's walk. Okay, like, walking is gonna be really good because when it comes to reacting to projectiles, you can't really do it out of a dash because when you dash, like I said, there's 13 frames where you can kind of get interrupted. But in this case, you can just dash through this and not care. And if Snake ever goes into shield or something like that, you have a command grab. So it's very dangerous for Snake to just kind of hold shield and just not do anything. And considering, like, you know, how good Incineroar's um, command grab is against spot dodge, even if he spot dodges, it's like, goes like spot dodge up tilt, you'd be able to catch him doing that as well. Okay, let me see your full hop. Okay, full hop up air for me. Okay, so now if I'm like setting up and I have to try to get past you and I want to do like something like this to get past you, you can just jump up there and hit me. And now if I like start pushing the B button and stuff like this, remember that once they commit to that, they can like only air dodge, I think. Like, hold on. Like, once they commit to that, you can hit them or you can simply catch their landing. If you go up there and hit them, they're going to blow up and you're going to end up in a trade war. Which, if you want to do that, you can. But if you want to go for the safer option, you can simply wait for them to land. Because a lot of times what they'll do is they'll hold shield and they'll roll or buffer roll or something like that. Or they'll immediately, like, land and then, like, try to, like, immediately mash attack. So that's the main thing you have to think about when you're, when you're trying to cover them in disadvantage. So does that make sense? So remember, if he's in the air doing this... If you don't want to take the trade damage, just catch his landing, because he's gonna la he's very linear when it comes to his disadvantage. So that's what you can you can trap. And remember, like if he air dodges or anything like that, like afterwards or rolls, just space yourself to where he's at command de your command grab distance for your side beat, and you can cover literally all of them because of how much range you cover when you do it. Does it make sense? Yeah, of course. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, my stake's not the greatest, but we'll go ahead and play this out, and I'll kind of see what you do. Remember, if you shield it and it bounces, actually, matter of fact, when it bounces your shield, I want you to revenge it every time. Bounce it on your shield and revenge. Oh, you parried it. Okay, if I do a fast lob, it bounces away. Okay, if I do a normal lob, if I do a fast lob, it kind of bounces away like that. Okay, I'm gonna do it, uh, do a normal lob. Oh, wait, no, oh, that wasn't a normal lob. Whoops. Yeah. Okay, if you bounce it off your shield, you can't do it that way. Try jabbing after shielding. Okay. Try short hop nearing out of shield. Okay. Um, can you try buffering walk forward and trying to grab it that way? Oh, you just tilted. Yeah. Okay. Let's try up tilt. Or yeah, you can just do it that way too. Just simply wait for it to fall down in front of you and just grab it that way. Okay, so in that case, like once it bounces off your shield, like there's like a, was a two and a half second timer on grenade. So what you can do is wait for it to bounce off your shield, wait for it to land, like to see if they, if they don't cook it, you can just like immediately counter. Like if I do this, like then you can counter once it bounces off your shield because it's cooking it, right? But if I hold it or delay it, that's where it becomes a little difficult. So, in that case, you just have to be smart of when you can counter it, or you can just simply just run through it. Like, bounce, I can bounce off your shield, and you can dash through it as well. Or do that, that works too. Like, bounce off your shield and immediately dash in. Yeah, you can just do that. Or you can just simply dash through it. Okay, I'm gonna bomb it, just dash through it. Oops, sorry. You don't even have to shield it, because if you shield it, they can condition you to, like, dash and grab you. I don't know why I was talking about, like, what you can do if you shield it. You don't need to shield it. It's so stupid. Okay, so that's how you kind of deal with that. Let's, uh, let's talk about ledge trapping the character. So, Snake's mix-ups off the ledge, they'll, like, jump in the, like, be reverse and do stuff like this, and immediately have to land somewhere. You can catch the landing that way. Just remember, if you catch it with a hitbox, like, down tilt, and the grenade's behind them, it's going to blow you up, right? So your command grab, that's the main thing you want to you want to use. Like if you have good grab options, Snake really struggles in disadvantage and you have that. So definitely want to exploit that more. So how you can set up at the ledge is you want to like focus on reacting what you see me doing instead of trying to read, okay? So you don't want to pick any preemptive option just like doing a dash tag or a side B as soon as like you think I'm going to do something because if you're wrong, now you got to chase me all the way across stage. We don't want that. 
So what you can do is if I neutral get up or something like that, you have dash grab, you have your side B, and if I jump up at all, you have your up air. Or if you see me jump preemptively, you could fade back fair off a ledge. Like if I like jump like this, you could fair me and then like drift back. And you just gotta remember the number one thing you have to hang on to is stage control. Alright, so I'm gonna just try to mix up and jump off the ledge as much as possible. I want you to try to react to see what I'm gonna do, okay? Oh, you interrupted me there. And also remember, if I pick aggressive options like get up attack and stuff like that, you can armor through it with your side B. Okay. Try doing Lariat more out of shield too, by the way. I think that that would help you. Out of shield, your fastest option is drop shield Lariat. Out of shield Nair is actually your fastest because it's frame nine. And then I think your, that, yeah, that'd be your best one. And can you land out of shield Nair on my shield? I mean, on me? Kind of sends me into a tech chase, you know? And I feel like if you just like, yeah, like just like that, do that again. Yeah, see how it kind of pops me away? That's, that, kind of, that gives you so much stage control because of that. So I think that that would help you. Get away. <laughs> oh man. Hold on, let me check the time real quick. Okay, we got about five minutes left. So what is it like? Is there anything specifically you want to work on before uh, before our time is up? Um, Mindset. Mindset. Okay, man, tell me real quick. What are you struggling with? So, let's say if I want to practice, okay. I'll, I'll go for a little bit, but if I encounter an opponent that, you know, is botting, I'm, I can't really contain my uh, anger all that much. Okay. Yeah, I've been getting better over, you know, the years. I've been mellowing out, but at the same time, it's like, I, I really want to be able to be that patient guy that, you know, is able to train for long hours without, you know, getting to it yeah without getting getting your mind you get getting mentally burnt yeah, getting burnt out okay so i struggled with that too so the big thing you got to understand whenever it comes to dealing with rage and stuff like that is that in a way it's natural because you're passionate about what you're doing and it's frustrating you because you don't understand why you're losing so the answer is in that finding out why you're losing saving your replays and then picking it apart stock by stock where you're getting hit why am i getting hit what other options did I have in this scenario? Like, what was he punishing me for? And the big thing, the good start to where you can start having that mindset is accepting that when you get hit, it was on you. It wasn't mm -hmm. on, it wasn't, there was no other reason except that you picked a bad option in a moment that you just, you shouldn't have been where you were, you know? And mm -hmm. the way you can figure that out is by studying exactly why you're getting hit and then if you are stumped on you don't know what the answer is at that point that's when you get in the lab and you start theory crafting and you start breaking down the, the what the opponent's win condition is on the flip side so let's say let's do snake for example if if you're struggling with snake and you're just kind of getting blown the hell up because you're dashing into grenades you're just trying to rush him down you can't trap him in the corner and stuff like that you're getting blown the hell up you got to stop and think okay what is my win objective what is my win condition yours is to walk him to the corner and ledge trap him as long as you can and stack up rage so that you can just land one big punish and just delete his stock so how can you efficiently do that if he's constantly yeeting projectiles at you okay well you now know but now you know that if you're dashing a lot, dash, like interrupting dashes with projectiles is hard. So what's the answer to that? Well, when it be smarter with your dashes and just, you know, know when to shield and when not to, or just dash through grenades, okay? Or if you're, you know, whenever it comes to your ledge trapping, okay, why do I keep on losing advantage? Well, my ledge trapping's not good. I'm not really a bit taking advantage of one of the main core points of the matchup. So of course I'm losing. So what do you do? You get in the lab, you start theory crafting how you cover the most options without you know risking too much like stage control not committing you know what i mean like kind of what i preached about before and you start picking apart what is the most like what is the ways i could be the most consistent to cover the most options while hanging on to stage control and making me play my game that's how you need to think because because if you don't have the answer in the moment 
save the replay so you can learn from it later. And I know that shit sucks because there's nothing worse than watching yourself get waxed. It sucks. Mm-hmm. It fucking sucks. It never gets easier, man. I've been at this shit for a long time. I still get mad. That's just part of it, man. But if you're passionate enough and you really want to improve, that is the fastest way to do it. Mm-hmm. One thing I do yeah. offer is uh, I do VOD review, whether it's Wi-Fi or not. How that works is you send me a replay and I will analyze it with you, whether it's tournament or whatever. If it's a matchup you're struggling with from a grind session, whatever, I can do that with you. I'd really appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times as people, whenever it comes to VOD review, they don't actually understand how to study VODs. One thing I can offer to kind of give you an idea of how I do it, tomorrow mm-hmm. I'm actually doing VOD review. I do it every Tuesday. So you can kind of like see how I do it. And then you can kind of see like my way of thinking whenever it comes to breaking down a game and breaking down players. Because that's what I'm best at is breaking down players and kind of figuring out what everyone's doing right and wrong. So once you kind of like start to wire your brain to be able to accept and humble yourself to be like, I am screwing up. Now, what am I doing to mess up and what can I do better? Once you switch to that mindset, everything changes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, that's the best I got. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best I got. But I mean, I th- it's, it's honestly what's worked for me. I'm literally giving you advice that I had to learn like a long, like along the road. For a long time, I was a rager. I had a hard time accepting loss and accepting that it's me. It's not some me just my opponent having BS tactics and stuff like that. I have options. It's just, am I willing to play a certain way to make the options work? Because whenever someone has a set play style that they want to swear by, and then it doesn't work, like they immediately are in shambles because they don't know how to think outside the box. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's what yeah, you need to I do. Really from a linear play style. You know, if anyone tries to play around it, I kind of get stuck there and I don't adapt as well. Exactly. So you got to think, like, okay, I'm getting circle camped, and I'm trying to, like, just force myself up there and hit them. What can I do to counter that? Okay, well, I know that if I simply stand center stage, and I'm just throwing out small feints, like short hops and stuff like that, I might get them to burn a resource, like their double jump, or in the case of Snake, push the B button, and then trying to force his way down with, like, an air dodge or something like that, and I can just trap his landing with a grab or something like that, because I got him to do what I'm already prepared for him to do, so I can punish it. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's like actively how you think you need to be thinking like in-game awareness is easily the most important thing to master when it comes to playing anything. So you have to constantly be aware of what's going on like step by step. Now that clarity comes with time and like a lot of playing the game. I was going to say because I tunnel vision uh, a little bit. Well, I can't I can't even say that I tunnel vision constantly. You know what I mean? Yeah, Once yeah. Things start getting like a little tight. I'm like, okay, I, I start tunneling in, and I, and I get set in my ways. No, whenever, whenever you are tunnel visioning, you have to like pay attention to what are you tunnel visioning on exactly? Because having a clear objective isn't necessarily tunnel visioning if you're just unless you're just focusing on one set way of trying to like force a win. You know what I mean? So what is it you normally tunnel vision? Give me an example. Um, let's see, I have, okay, so this is my main issue, I tunnel vision on myself a lot. Okay. Do you know what, okay. you know, yeah, you're I... not supposed to be paying attention to your character, you're supposed to be paying attention to the enemy, but I, for some reason, when I'm starting to get into disadvantage, when things are starting to get onto the wire, for some reason I start to focus on myself, you know, trying to make sure I don't, you know, uh, delete myself early. You don't need to be thinking about you. You need to be thinking about your opponent, okay? The thing is, whenever you're fighting your opponent, you have to think of a match as an exchange of information between you and your opponent, okay? If you're just staring at your answers and what you're doing, you're not lit paying attention to the information your opponent's giving you ever. And that that completely like takes away so much of what you could be covering. Does that make sense? So whenever yeah. I'm in neutral and I'm sp- I'm shimming with Ken and stuff like that outside of his range, I'm waiting to see, I'm watching them to see what they're doing about me taking my time 
and make him finding my way in. Like whenever Incineroar is like taking his time waiting for the approach, what they're gonna do? They're gonna run to the corner and they're gonna start camping, right? So the next step would be to walk a little bit farther and start taking as much stage control as possible because your positional pressure from just being close to them will make them want to try to jump past you or go through you because it's the only two options they have. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that then after that step, once you get into the corner, now it's a game. What are the, how are they gonna get out of the corner? Okay, a lot of times they're gonna just jump away. That's that's the standard. Okay, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start juggling them with up airs. Okay, or I'm going to catch their landing whenever they come down and once they burn their double jump because they're either gonna air dodge or mash attack and I can armor through both. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how you want to be thinking in that case. You see yeah, what I mean? You want to start using your character's up options efficiently because from what I'm saying, I just kind of do like the basic thing. I try to get a roll and then not really use my character's strengths. Use your character's strengths by exploiting your opponent's weaknesses by watching what they are doing. Because people, even at top level, man, whenever it comes to getting at a disadvantage, like a lot of players are just linear because disadvantage is linear in this game. And once you understand how to fully exploit it, even characters like Incineroar can blow opponents up. So that's, that's the main thing, man, is just focus more on watching your opponent and thinking, why did he pick that option? What could I have done about that? Okay, I did punish that. Why did I punish that? Okay, how? Okay, now I've punished that. He's not going to do that again. What's his other options? And how can I cover the most of it? You see what I mean? And then it just becomes a, a constant flow of you asking your opponent questions and them giving answers, but you can't read the answers if you're not watching. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That pretty much covers it, man. Is there any final questions you got? Um, no, you kind of bundled up ad ad adapting into that, which I really like. Okay. Um, but other than that, I mean, if anything, I might just come for another one. Heck yeah, man. Well, if you want to book one sometime, just feel free to shoot me a DM anytime, bro. I definitely appreciate you um, coming through. Yeah, I really like being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I'll catch you later. Peace. See you.